toes. Wiggly toes. Too much toe action for you? Sorry, I was just trying to get you excited about the muscles of today's tutorial. You see, today we're going to be looking at two small muscles in your foot, which help you lift your toes off the ground. Yes, I know, it's not exactly the most mind-blowing movement, but every muscle has a story to tell. Stay with me now and find out more as we explore the functions of the dorsal muscles of the foot. So today we're going to be looking at the functions of two muscles. Firstly, the extensor hallucis brevis muscle, which, as its name suggests, has something to do with the hallux, or the big toe and the extensor digitorum brevis muscle, which acts on the second to fourth digits of the foot. Just one thing that I'd like you to note, sometimes these muscles are considered a single muscle due to the fact that they often blend into one another. But for the sake of completeness, we're going to consider them separately. So let's begin our study today by first reminding ourselves about the anatomy of each of these two muscles, beginning first with the extensor hallucis brevis muscle. So as you can see in our spiffy 3D model here, the extensor hallucis brevis muscle has its origin, or proximal attachment, on the suprolateral surface of the calcaneus bone, close to the calcaneocuboid joint. And from here, the long slender body of the extensor hallucis brevis courses distomedially along the dorsum, or the back of the foot, where it inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. Nice and straightforward. Let's turn our attention now to the extensor digitorum brevis muscle, whose anatomy is not unlike that which we saw with the extensor hallucis brevis. It too has its origin on the suprolateral surface of the calcaneus bone of the foot, and from here the extensor digitorum brevis generally gives off three slips, which course distally along the back of the foot to insert into the bases of the middle phalanges of the second through fourth digits or alternatively, by attaching to the tendons of its brother, the extensor digitorum longus muscle, which you can see here. I should add that this muscle is somewhat variable in its anatomy, in that sometimes one or more of the muscular heads are absent. Or alternatively, an additional head is present, and this attaches to the fifth digit. Now, when we consider the anatomy of any muscle, it's important for us to identify the joints which they act upon, since that's where any movement will occur. In the case of the extensor hallucis brevis, we're going to be focusing on just one joint, the metatarsophalangeal joint of the big toe. And this is where the first metatarsal bone articulates with the proximal phalanx of the big toe. For the extensor digitorum brevis, the metatarsophalangeal joints are also in question here, this time those of the second through fourth digits. In addition, this muscle also acts upon the proximal interphalangeal joints of the same toes. This is the articulation between the proximal phalanx with the middle phalanx of each digit. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.